Okay, so today we'll uh, talk about oil tankers. Oil tanker, well, it's a specific case of a bulk carrier essentially because it, it also carries cargo in bulk. But only difference is here the bulk cargo is in liquid form. And uh, well, as far as oil tanker can be a general name, that means it can carry, it can be a vessel to carry any kind of oil. Though when you talk about oil tanker, we generally think in terms of crude carrier. Principles are same, whether it's a edible oil tanker, refined oil tanker or a crude carrier. Crude oil tanker, crude carrier means crude oil tanker, petroleum crude, right? So basically principles are same. Only thing if it is a crude carrier, it is generally very large, very big. So we have terms like VLCC or ULCC, right? That VLCC is very large crude carrier or ULCC is ultra large crude carrier. This is just some of the nomenclatures. Generally, you will not have a ultra large edible oil carrier, no. It will not be there generally. Neither you will have a ultra large say refined oil carrier, no. It is only in terms of crude because this, uh, I mean this business started uh, because of uh, there were oil producing countries means uh, crude oil producing countries and there were countries who were importing them. So that is how this trade became very lucrative and this uh, oil tankers this uh, started growing in size from medium size to big to very large to ultra large. I mean there are cases where uh, some uh, vessels up to 500,000 ton capacity were built. But somehow again that market is no more there because of various uh, global political reasons etc. There was a lull in the market as far as this ultra large crude carriers are concerned even interestingly. I mean this is not uh, right within this scope but still interesting to note that uh, in 70s it became very very this trade became very very lucrative in early 70s. So uh, one of the country Japan they started building this ultra large crude carriers in a kind of a mass scale. Mass scale does not mean that in hundreds it was I mean quite a number of them they had orders in the shipyards. So they built shipyards which were specialized to build this ultra large crude carriers and it seems I mean their record time of production was 9 months. In 9 month period they were producing one crude carrier which is of that capacity of almost 500,000 tons of capacity huge right very efficient fully automated shipyard one can say, but automated to handle only this type of vessel right? that is what is referred to as hard automation. So the result was suddenly that there was a well political problem in the uh, in the Middle East and all that then uh, all those disturbances began wherein it became difficult to uh, ply these vessels right uh, ply these vessels between the exporting and the importing countries and the result was many of these orders were cancelled because many of the ship owners the liners uh, uh, ship operators who placed order on these Japanese ship shipyards they cancelled their orders and the net result was those shipyards went bankrupt altogether bankrupt and to the extent of some of the ship shipyard owners committed suicide even to that extent right. So that shows uh, what does it mean flexible manufacturing system this is just beside the point it is just to take a note of it that means uh, one should not go for such kind of hard automation because then your adaptability to the market requirement becomes very uh, very small you, you you become inflexible right and suddenly the market demand shifts then you cannot adapt to that and if you cannot adapt then whatever 
superior most technology you had that becomes redundant of no use right they were so efficient they had been produce, producing it seems in 9 month or periods that's too much but in a changed market scenario they became useless anyway so that how, that is how those oil tankers and many of those big oil tank i mean those super large ultra large oil tankers now they have been converted some of them have been converted to well some apso and some in jails floating jail right worldwide different countries they use them as jail to keep the prisoners out at the sea floating jail that's very good way of utilizing those uh, uh, i mean dumped ULCCs which were no more used for uh, carriage transportation of crude and some yes I mean uh, th th that these days also is going on I mean instead of building a PSO a PSO is what floating production, storage and operation. yeah floating production storage and operation it is basically for oil exploration oil exploration and storage so that is a very uh, sort of a popular concept these days. Uh, instead of building a new APSO, it is better if you have an old tanker converted to APSO that becomes more economic and faster or whatever. Anyway, so, so what is this oil tanker? It is essentially crude carrier. What are the basic features of this? As you see, it is a full form vessel. Till now, we have not actually talked about the form like uh, well, general cargo ship. The it is in between the CB, the block coefficient which defines whether the vessel is slender or full, fine form or full form. Fine form means you have a very, that half angle of entrance is small, the CB is less, fine form, right. The water lines will be very slender, a full form water lines will be fuller, means the CB is higher, right. So, general cargo carrier CB can be in the range of say 0.7 point well 0.65 to 0.7 a bulk carrier can be in the range of well 0.7 to 0.75 whereas a oil tanker cb is greater than 0.8 it almost a rectangular box that is how a huge rectangular box almost 0.8 is the uh, 0.8 and above we have not seen uh, oil tankers such crude carriers below 0.8 that is one of the very uh, typical feature of these oil tanker. Next typical feature is unlike other vessels, this vessel it has a empty return voyage. The return voyage is empty means because uh, 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 this vessels cannot be used for any other sort of transportation or any other cargo. So, it only goes one way and comes back empty. So, the moment it is coming back empty, you can well imagine this huge amount of cargo once discharged means it comes up very much. I mean the draft becomes very less. So, from the point of view of propulsion efficiency as well as stability, you will have to ballast it, right. Ballasting the vessel means well, that means you will put in water, sink it to the required uh, draft, bring it and then again, then again pump out the water for you will again take cargo. So, that uh, previously it used to be very straightforward means cargo is discharged and in the same holes you take in water, ballast water right. I can come to the uh, port of origin, discharge that water in sea, take in cargo and go, but you are discharging no more you are discharging just the sea water, but a contaminated sea water. So, that Marpole convention I was talking about. I think so, Marpol 78, 1978 Marpol Convention declared that this is not permitted. <coughs> you will have to have a segregated ballast, right? Segregated ballast space. That means you will have to have spaces earmarked for ballasting, you cannot carry cargo there. Before that, uh, uh, possibly before that Marple 78, maybe Marple 73, I do not recall exactly. Anyway, sometime in that period, it also became mandatory for having a double bottom, 
first it became mandatory for double bottom because you can very well see if I have a if we then now go back to our midship section a oil tanker midship section can be very well like this obviously this is my hub section just the hull right just the hull definitely inside all kinds of stiffening members are there but as such there is no necessity of having double bottom in a general cargo ship you need a double bottom functionally because you need a flat platform to stack your cargo in in bulk carrier you need that because if you do not have a smooth flat platform then uh, well uh, in the bottom you will have all kinds of uh, structural arrangement then you cannot unloading becomes difficult. Same thing container ship you need a flat this thing a roller ship you need a flat space. So, double bottom was required functionally also, but oil tanker it was not needed because it is a liquid cargo you pump in pump out. So, whether there are structures protruding in, in the thing does not matter. So, originally oil tankers used to be like this, like this means here you have well the necessary uh, strengthening members, I mean necessary strengthening members as usual. You did not draw this, I am just show, showing, right. And well, maybe uh, say this is a, there is one long channel bulkhead. This you need not draw because we will uh, uh, no more this type is used. Well, a modified version of this. So, long channel bulkhead and uh, there could be additional gutters like that, right. And well, your transverses, right, transverse members, etcetera. Right. So, for all practical purpose there is no harm doing like this because I have the long channel stiffening because it is a liquid cargo. So, and it is a close, close section. So, strength wise let it be big no problem. We talked about uh, ultra large crude carrier way back in 70s, but in this 2007 also we are still yet to build proper uh, 12,000, 14,000 TU container ships. Probably lengthwise they will be still smaller than you will see. Probably it will be less than that, right. But still that is a problem. I mean that is more challenging than this because simple reason it was a closed section. So, strength wise not big a problem. So, you have that uh, longitudinal strength, the transverse members giving transverse strength, etcetera. But this uh, from the point of view of bottom damage and oil spilling out, so it became mandatory to have double bottom. That is how first double bottom came, right. And then came the segregated ballast, means you will have to provide a double bottom and you will have to earmark the double bottom spaces for keeping uh, taking ballast because unless this this construction is called single bottom construction the one uh, uh, which you can see it is a single bottom construction because there is no double bottom only the bottom shell. So, here you do not have any mechanism of even having segregated ballast right. So, first the concept of double bottom came and then this double bottom spaces were earmarked for ballasting that is called segregated ballast means ballast water cannot be contaminated with uh, your crude right. Well, uh, uh, when you are talking about ballast there is another interesting aspect did you hear anything or did you have or you have come across of anything to do with ballast water as they say ballast water management. I mean till now well you see to start with it was the well as far as oil tanker is concerned it used to be single bottom you load in cargo you go discharge cargo take in water ballast water come back 
discharge ballast water and then we found it's polluting. After it polluted, after a lot of things happened, then only realized and started putting uh, double bottom uh, and segregated ballast space. Eventually, now we have even double wall. Now, probably it is mandatory to have double wall, like container ship we showed double wall, same double wall because site damage so that you have another line of defense so that oil spillage does not take place because you have seen probably some of the oil tanker disaster and what it means oil spillage. Well, so from pollution point of view segregated ballast was done and now people are finding other interesting phenomena because suppose uh, say say you you um, what is happening right suppose in Middle East in Kuwait you load the crude right and take it down to Alaska and there you discharge it in some refinery there and take it ballast water bring and discharge the ballast water in Kuwait. So, it is a contamination of ballast water. Alaskan water is getting mixed in the in this Middle East ocean and that is creating problem that is creating serious problem it seems because the ocean different parts of the ocean has different microbiology. The ocean biology is different you cannot go on just and this mixing is taking place in huge bulk because say a bulk uh, even bulk or whatever primarily this oil tankers they are creating the maximum problem because they take in huge ballast water. Other vessels also they take depending on their loading condition to uh, make it even keel to uh, balance the trim, heel, etc. They can take depending on their partly they have unloaded or partly they are loaded whatever. But oil tanker it is a huge amount of ballast water they will taking some from some place and discharging altogether in a different place. So, it seems this uh, so called ocean flora and fauna is getting affected badly affected that is a kind of pollution due to ballast water contamination. So, now people are thinking of all kinds of um, solutions to uh, come out and solve this problem because ballasting is needed you will have to do. So, now the question is such that the water does not get mixed up. So, that is also a very interesting domain people are working in. But interestingly these things uh, once it happens then you think that it is so simple and so uh, simple means well so obvious. But we do not take care unless and until it happens is not it. So, that a vessel it is better to have a double bottom it is so obvious now. But just go back to 70s hardly few of the oil tankers had double bottom this is not needed you can do in a single bottom construction. Anyway, so that is one of the uh, I mean some of the typical features that it must have double bottom and uh, probably now it is also must be a cellular 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 construction that means double wall right. There is also another typical feature that it has become mandatory that you will have to have a double bottom a double wall because uh, then you have it is all stemming from the fact of pollution ocean pollution. Um, and to this added is the ballast water management that means the system has to be developed such that this huge amount of ballast water does not get mixed up in different places. So, well uh, these things people are working on different kinds of systems by which the ballast water will not be transported physically to uh, the vessel will be think of a system that uh, when coming in the empty return voyage you will have mechanism of opening some of the valves as if I mean make the hull through and through open just think I mean schematically you think suppose I, I open it here some holes as if I have made. So, what is flowing from this side and going out there? So, part of the as if buoyancy I am not using anymore, I am adding weight. So, it is giving me the necessary sinkage 
and water is just flowing about. So, I am not carrying the water. So, water con contamination is not taking place, but how to do this? This can be a concept. Right? Anyway, so that is what. So, now coming back to the construction part of it, uh, well, as far as uh, mid subsection is concerned, once again, as I have suggested, that we start with the outer bottom. Obviously, outer bottom will be the mid subsection. Outer bottom will be, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the 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 shell structure will be same as that of any other vessel, right? Then you draw the deck. Obviously, there is no question of hatch opening, right? Make the double bottom because double bottom is mandatory. Make a double wall. Double wall is mandatory. So basic thing has been done. Then assume that the well, depending on the breadth of the vessel, you'll have one or two or three or whatever number of side longitudinal bulkheads. If the oil tanker is smaller, maybe you will have only one central line longitudinal bulkhead. If it is still bigger, you may have two, one port, one starboard and so on. So, let us assume there are two central line bulkheads. So, this is one central line bulkhead running along the longitudinal along the length. So, we are drawing the typical things which are very typical of a oil tanker because rest other things are same for all. So, that is how you will never make a mistake, then you will know. First, you go about drawing the, uh, uh, putting the uh, structural items which are typically required from the functional point of view. Rest all are common because rest all are basically from the structural point of view, from the strength point of view, right. Th definitely, these which are functional point of view also will contribute towards strength, but I am saying thereby you can come to the midship section logically. So, here what? After drawing the shell, you know a double bottom is needed. So, you put a double bottom, you know a double wall is needed, put a double wall and you know that to reduce the free surface effect. So, there are longitudinal bulkheads. Assume there are two bulkheads. So, one you draw say on the port side, right. And next comes stiffening arrangement. It is same for all other vessels here also. So, obviously, we go for longitudinal stiffening, more so it is it being a, a liquid carrier. So, there is no question of cargo interference, right. So, all longitudinal stiffening, deck longitudinally stiffened, your bottom shell longitudinally stiffened. right and then obviously here you have the the floor and all that is all same aspect where you have this central line bulkhead you have a uh, side girder right that is how deck is longitudinally stiffened and the double wall same thing as we have done in container ship, same stiffening arrangement depending on. Uh, so, like this it goes. Right? And then obviously, you will have to have uh, the transverses. Now, now entire longitudinal stiffening has been done. That means it, it is now sufficiently providing the longitudinal strength, right? So from this you can see all the members which we have drawn, barring this floor, rest of the material they contribute towards longitudinal strength. Means the main deck, the both the inner and outer walls, side walls, inner bottom, bottom shell 
bottom shell longitudinal, inner bottom longitudinal, deck longitudinal and all the longitudinals in the uh, double wall uh, that enclosure as well as your uh, this center line bulkhead, uh, side bulkhead, longitudinal bulkhead and this longitudinal bulkhead also will have stiffener of its own right. So, this can be well vertical uh, this again longitudinal stiffening arrangement I can provide because this is also a big plate same thing will be longitudinally stiffened right. Now comes since these longitudinals are there you will have to provide support to reduce the span so provide transverses in the same fashion you have provided transverse this floor you have provided in the same plane right these are my transverses. So, just by drawing this this black oval holes I am indicating that there is a plate with the opening that right and well these are my scallops as usual. <coughs> so, there is a transverse and what happens here also in the whole region also transverses are provided. That means, this transverse can be like this. I can provide like this for these longitudinals right. This is well bracketed. and then here these longitudinals are there. So, I can provide a transverse of this fashion. Assume there is another bulkhead at the center line. Or supposing it is not there does not matter. So, then it goes like this this is continuing on the port side so you have this also continuing right so as if this trans there is also a transverse, this double line indicates that there is a flange, there is a flange here right, a face plate, those are my scallops. So, a essentially, essentially it is a as, as we have talked about in general cargo ship we said if the side shell is longitudinally stiffened you will have to provide wave frames to support that. So, this is as if my side shell of a uh, cargo ship I mean what example we are giving. So, then you have the wave frame now in cargo ship for this reason we do not provide longitudinal stiffening because it will eat up so much of cargo space. But here a similar situation if I just take this center line bulkhead as the side wall and it is longitudinally stiffened. So, I have to provide a transverse to support that, but here providing transverse there is no problem because you have liquid cargo right. Same thing that same one plate is being continued like this not necessarily it has to be in this fashion it can be cut here and bracketed that all, all all depends on the practice how you are going to do that. Most importantly is you provide a support. Now, similarly such uh, transverse we have not provided on the other side it is not needed it is needed only this side here I have not provided not needed because the long channels are supported inside. 
right. So, basic idea is the stiffening primary stiffening members are the longitudinals and then to support the longitudinals to provide support to the longitudinals to bring the span to the uh, permissible span length which is 3 to 4 frame space at those intervals we provide the transverse members right. So, thereby we see so this is a kind of a structural arrangement only thing here what we do is suppose these are longitudinally stiffened. So, this can be a this stiffness can be either a angle section or bulb sections right. What is done is they are uh, the uh, flange they point downwards why because otherwise there will be oil accumulation there. So, these are some some of the small things which which one should keep in mind that they should point downwards otherwise they will form like a channel and will yeah it will hold the oil you cannot clean that up right. So, th these are some of the aspects. Double bottom is as usual with a central line girder at the uh, at the central line or provide a duct kill, but obviously a duct kill arrangement is much more uh, preferable than a central line girder right. And if it is a oil tanker well if it is expected that it is it will be quite big at least 100,000 200,000 tons of crude it will carry. So, well possibly it will be always preferable to have a duct kill. Uh, not only from the strength point of view, but also functionally. Obviously, functionally duct kill is always better for any kind of vessel because the duct remains totally dry and that entire ducting duct passage can be used for you know those cables, pipes, etcetera, etcetera, right. So, the, their maintenance, their upkeep everything becomes very convenient where otherwise they will have to pass through the uh, doll bottom space which may be it will remain immersed in ballast water or immersed in fresh water or whatever purpose that space is being used. So, that is what is the well uh, the uh, midship section arrangement for uh, oil tanker. Well, uh, again just coming back to this profile what I, here I have purposely drawn a bulb in that generally oil tankers will, will, will have a bulb section in the profile. Generally, it will have a bulb section in the profile for the very simple reason that it is a full form vessel. So, its powering requirement is also very high, right. Powering requirement is high because full form means the resistance towards movement in water is higher that means you need more power to overcome that resistance. So, by providing a bulb it offsets part of the hydrodynamic resistance means reduces to some extent. So, generally a bulbous bow this is what is called bulbous bow is added to the forward section. And other feature is that a in this oil tanker the engine room is always fully at the aft, always fully at the aft, rest all I mean the uh, the holes are all forward of the engine room cargo holds. Same thing is true in case of uh, in case of container ship as well as bulk carrier right as well as bulk carrier also engine room is always fully aft and the cargo holds are forward of engine room. Whereas, in general cargo ship there can be a situation there can be a situation that uh, you have your engine room semi aft. What is this semi aft means? Something like this. This is in a general cargo carrier. Can you tell me why this is happening or why I am emphasizing that well all engine rooms are fully aft 
what's what's the harm if I keep it at the midship, at the mid midship region, or keep it in the forward? Here specifically, I am saying that general cargo carrier. Well, it is a case that it is not fully aft but semi aft. That means definitely that I would prefer to have it as much aft as possible, isn't it? Why? Simple reason. Yeah, the simple reason is I have the minimum length of the propeller shaft. That is the simple reason. Yeah, yeah, that, that is what we are coming. So, our always the objective would be to keep it as much aft as possible so that I have my minimum length of propeller shaft. By having minimum length of propeller shaft, I have a lot of advantage. Cost is less, weight is less, alignment is easier, less number of bearing, less number of uh, uh, since less bearing means less vibration problem, all kinds. Transmission loss is less, but the moment it goes little forward, my propeller shaft length is increasing. So, why I go here? Definitely, I, I, I would have liked to be in the aft, but Unfortunately, I cannot have so this is my hole number one, this hole number two, three, and four. That means there definitely some reason why I had to go semi aft. It's nothing but you do not have enough space in this total aft region to house all the machineries you require. That's why you have to go little forward because what is happening I have told you that the CB of general cargo carrier is of the order of 0.65 to 0.7 that means it is little it is on the finer side rather on the finer side so so the water line at the double bottom level or the level where the engine and all those things will be located the water line could be like this. So, my uh, this is my aft collision bulkhead, this is the in, this is what is the uh, well let us assume how many have drawn there. So, this is what this I told uh, hold 1 engine room hold 2 3 4 so this this is the plan plan at the at the tank top level say so this is my tank top plan tank top plan means means it's giving me the idea of what area flat area is available at that level so as you can see this one in this region i have a very narrow zone. So, I may not have enough space to house all the, the main engine as well as all the auxiliary machineries. So, I have to shift. So, as I move towards midship, I am becoming fuller. So, I have more area. So, that is how that is how essentially it is uh, uh, semi aft. Sometimes, we will find arrangement like this say you have the vessel these are your uh, well the subdivision bulkheads <coughs> and your double bottom is going like this So, what I have done? Double bottom in this hold, I have raised it. Why? Because you raise it, you get more area. Because it may be a case in a particular cargo ship, the kind of lines you are getting that even shifting one hold going in the semi aft position, that means as if I am shifting to the second hold space, right? Still, I am not getting enough, enough flat area to house all my engine, all my machineries. So, I raise the double bottom height. As I raise, I get more area because the shell is flaring out. Right? 
So, this is what is a raised double bottom that can be required, right. Whereas, in the cargo holds, well, whatever is the uh, minimum required from the point of view of uh, strength as well as other functional requirement, right. So, that is how the uh, arrangement of double bottom can depend. This, these things generally happen in case of ships which are fine form say passenger vessel also is a fine form ship because there you expect to have little higher speed of operation. So, you make it fine form you have you can achieve for the same given power higher speed right. So, there you need this uh, uh, it may so happen that the engine room to be shifted same semi aft and also it may require a raising of the double bottom height. Since we are talking about double bottom height, maybe it will not be out of place to talk which decides this height, what decides. This is one of the important aspect in the arrangement of structural arrangement, right. What is the double bottom height? So, first and foremost starting point is what is called rule double bottom height right rule double bottom height rule double bottom height means this is you calculate from the classification rules say IRS Indian register of shipping. So, for a given size of the vessel the classification rule will pre prescribe that your minimum double bottom height should be cannot be less than some value right. So, that is purely from the structural point of view, from the strength point of view because the primary uh, obligation or duty of classification society rules are to look after your structural soundness, not functionality, structural soundness. They may not be bothered about functionality, but structural soundness. So, that will prescribe the rule double bottom height. So, that is your bottom line. That means, you cannot reduce that you can always increase because it will say it need not be less than some value you can always increase. So, what we will next check you will check the tankage capacity tankage capacity what is that you need to have certain capacity in the double bottom space because that space will be utilized for your fresh water carriage some space will be utilized for uh, fuel oil storage some sp spaces will be used for ballasting purpose. So, you will know how much fresh water cubic meter is required, how much fuel oil cubic meter is required or ballasting. So, that way you will have to check that tankage capacity, this capacity of these spaces. You will have to work out that where what will remain, right. Maybe the space has to be divided in several compartments, right, because the whole double bottom space you are not going to use. Obviously, the space below the engine room, some space you will use for fuel oil, probably some space will be used for fresh water and so on because no point using fresh water here in the forward. You then have to have a long pipeline to come to this place because your fresh water requirement is in the accommodation requirement, is not it? So, anyway, so all those tankage capacity you have to check and accordingly may need to augment or increase the double bottom height. Next another aspect which we overlook that is from the maintenance point of view. The maintenance requirement that means the double bottom height should be such that it will be maintenance friendly that means for surveying purpose for an inspection purpose, for repair purpose, a person can comfortably work there as far as possible. So, wherever possible, you will have to provide sufficient height so that you can work. Obviously, if the vessel is small and then you cannot do it. That is a different issue, you cannot help, but wherever is possible, you will have to because from the tankage capacity point of view, from the rule double bottom height point of view, that is from the strength point of view, you may not need a double bottom height of 2 meters. 
say 1 1.2 meter is more than enough but if i can afford to have 2 meter double bottom height it's better to give that because then apart from satisfying these first two requirements it will also satisfy the third requirement which is very important so that is what is uh, that is how basically on these primary three factors you decide on the double bottom height and the fourth factor is very is basically a specific case to space i mean is is what to say not a general issue but it is characteristic of specific case that is it depends on the uh, cargo density we have seen that in case of obio obio carrier there all these superseding all these requirements this cargo density uh, requirement becomes more important and there you have a unusually high double bottom much more higher double bottom just to take care of the center of gravity right so that is what is the double bottom uh, height and there is uh, uh, while continuing with double bottom here you you may see what i have drawn here in this suppose this one is your fresh water and say this is my fuel oil say this is my fuel oil so you can see that there is a gap in between i have kept a gap in between right so this uh, the arrangement is uh, i mean it could have been as well say uh, you have the the well let me just a little exaggerated let us draw say this double bottom space i am dividing in two two hubs or well two spaces one is for uh, fresh water right another for fuel oil <coughs> right but in this way there is no harm doing like this but this is not done it is always done in this fashion you keep a gap in between right you keep a gap in between that means this is your double bottom space right suppose up to from some frame to up to some some uh, some distance you provide say for fuel oil and then one frame space gap this is one frame space gap and then well maybe <coughs> this tank fresh water can you tell me why this gap simple common sense contamination again contamination means though these the, this this particular member what is that this is nothing but a floor a solid watertight floor right in this plane we are having the floors right at every third fourth frame space we are having plate floors rest are bracket floor and now depending on your tankage requirement some of these floors i can make them watertight floor thereby divide the space in different tanks tankage requirement and now this is when there are two different kinds of liquids are to be carried so you have to give a gap in between this gap is referred to as coffer dam this particular term is used coffer dam the whole idea is that there may be a case of small leakage developing in one of these watertight uh, floors it may happen that some there can be a some failure right over the usage because of some reason or other a crack develops and one of the floors starts leaking so there will be contamination so to avoid contamination you keep a blank empty space in between that is referred to as coffer dam so whatever leakage takes place it remains in that space 
So, that is for the safety point of view of from the con, uh, point of view of avoiding contamination of liquids being carried in the doll bottom. Right? So, that is how is the uh, this doll bottom constructions. These are the other aspect apart from the structural aspect, these are the aspects one have to keep in mind while deciding on the doll bottom and this is true for all kinds of vessels. right? So, what we see is that whether it is a general cargo carrier or a oil tanker will have same kind of doll bottom arrangement. right? Only thing well for all practical purpose a general cargo carrier generally we do not put a duct keel, but again it would be a good design practice to provide for duct keel, whatever be the ship type, whatever be the ship type it is good practice to provide for that. That may add to the cost, but functionally it may become much more better in the long run for the owner. right? And otherwise for general, uh, the, the midship section, this particular thing you keep in mind that whenever you are laying out because midship section is very important because that is the uh, that is the backbone of as far as the structural strength is concerned because the midship section members in the midship section they suffer the maximum stress levels because of longitudinal bending and the moment it suffers maximum stress level all kinds of failure are most likely in the midship because the operating stress level is the highest so, your fatigue uh, limits are lower, it is more prone to fatigue uh, failure, you are more prone to more structural uh, uh, higher corrosion rate and so on and so forth. Right? That is why as I started when I started, we said that there are certain mandatory design uh, requirements which had to be approved by the classification system. One of them is mid subsection. Once this mid subsection is done, then you will have to in fact work out uh, the uh, section modulus about the neutral axis and check for the stress level at the uh, farthest most members right and thereby again do a few iteration to come to the final scantlings of all the structural members. So, basic thing is you look from the point of view of functional requirement put all those members and then put the rest members from structural requirement. Means you have to stiffen them. So, longitudinals, you have to support the longitudinals. So, transverses, you have to have a proper load path. So, brackets and so on, right. Okay. So, next then we will go for structural alignment. Mm -hmm.